Hello again and welcome to another how-to. Uh, it may be difficult to tell, but I'm out here in the garage again today. Um, the reason for that is I'm going to be working with some uh, nasty chemicals once again. So this is uh, acetone nail polish remover. Um, I'm also going to be testing out uh, at least one kind of super glue. And the reason for that is, I'm not sure if you recognize this particular part, but it is one that's prone to breaking. It is the clip from the case of an Apple IIGS, and that is a common failure point. Uh, these guys typically hold the, uh, I guess it goes this way, yeah, typically hold the case in place. When you want to remove the case, you push on it, and so this hinge over time eventually gets brittle. Typically it'll crack first and then it will break in spectacular fashion as this one has. So what I'm going to try and do is fix this particular hinge and come up with a method for fixing other ones. Uh, the case that this came off of is not mine however so I can't experiment with it as well as I could uh, if it were my own because um, it's a friend's. Um, I do however have some other broken pieces of 2C case that I'm going to experiment with. Get a couple of different ideas of how to go about it. And I'm going to share that with you today. So the first thing most people would try when putting two pieces of uh, plastic together like this is super glue. And uh, I'll give that a shot today as well. So I've got this piece here. It goes back together. It's a pretty good joint. There's no gaps in there to fill in. There's no missing pieces. So super glue should work pretty well with this because it works best when there's no air gap in between the pieces that you're gluing together. However, I don't think it's going to be ideal for this because after it makes that joint, it's going to be fairly brittle and any additional stress on that is going to break it pretty much right away. Just to give you a control group, so to speak, Go ahead and get a dab of this. This is a cyanoacrylate Loctite brand, ultra gel. So it gives you uh, at least a few seconds before it bonds to get the pieces in place and hold them together. So it's already started to bond and it's uh, it's not going anywhere, but I'll give that at least uh, a few minutes to totally set up and maybe come back in an hour or so once everything else is done. So, super glue, test number one. And here I'm going to put just a tiny little bit of acetone. And people may be wondering why I'm not wearing gloves, but this is intentionally made as a nail polish remover, and so it should be safe on your skin. Natural nails, removal of nail tips, and artificial nails, extremely flammable, however, keep away from flame. Yeah. So. This should be fairly safe on skin. There are some other solvents that uh, I wouldn't want to get close to, to bare skin, but uh, since this is actually made for removing nail polish, uh, you can't wear gloves doing that, so it should be okay. There is a warning, very prominent, to keep it away from your eyes and your face, and keep away from open flame. So, just a few drops of acetone in here. It's hard to tell because it's clear, so I've got my, my next victim here is a piece, again, of sacrificial Apple IIc case. I've broken it in much the same way that that hinge on the GS would break. There's uh, just a little tiny bit of the plastic holding it together, um, and then otherwise a clean break right there in the middle. So what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of acetone here in the middle of the break, uh, press it together, and then hope for the best. And for that, I'm just going to use a little wooden toothpick to grab just a tiny drop. You can already see it sort of softening the edge of this. Enough to get the inside of that join to stick back together, but not enough to uh, worry about melting any of the rest of the plastic. So, press that together. You can see the 
some of the melted or dissolved bits kind of oozing out of the crack there so we know that the acetone is working and making that that solid plastic into more of a liquid or paste. Essentially what will happen is the acetone will evaporate and the plastic will reset as uh, solid again. And finally uh, what I'm going to do is mix the acetone with some little shaved off bits of that plastic and mix it together to make almost like a, a glue. Now this uh, is not a new idea, this is something that you'll see actually a pretty common solution for gluing together ABS parts from 3D printing. And if you do a Google search for uh, acetone weld or solvent welding ABS, you'll see a lot of videos on how to do this with uh, ABS parts that come off of something like a MakerBot. And it works really well with the, with the 3D printed parts. So I thought I'd give it a try with some of these 30 year old Apple II parts. Because the acetone, as you can see, is dissolving that pretty effectively into a paste. And that's what we're gonna use as our glue. And it will also work pretty well as a filler for where those joints don't always come together perfectly. I'm literally just using a few drops of acetone. Doesn't take much and this plastic is totally dissolved after a minute or two. So what I've done here is taped the two halves together. That should hold them together while the, the glue sets. And I'm just applying a liberal amount. I'm just going to press the two halves together, make sure that there's enough of the glue kind of throughout the, throughout the break. See it kind of just closing out the ends there. And just, yeah, I didn't do a great job of getting the uh, you know, two pieces straight, but I also have a little time before plastic sets completely to reposition things. Okay. So I'll let that set up and then report back in just a few minutes. So looks like the acetone in the bowl here has completely dried up and evaporated and left just the plastic itself behind. So my bet is that this first piece is done as well. So it's pretty solid. If I put a little bit of a torque on it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely bending. Yeah. That did not have a whole lot of strength in it with just the acetone on that bond. Let's take a look at the super glue, which is probably going to be about the same. So just a little bit of pressure there. Uh, I can see that the plastic here is plastic is bending there, but the super glue is not breaking. The super glue is holding up pretty well. I'm surprised at how strong that is. Usually it's a little bit more brittle. All right, so I'm back. It took me a little while to get back to this, but let's take a look and see how these two acetone bonded two C parts. Look after a little curing time. So now this one was the one, this is the one that I used that sort of filler, and you can see the extra has kind of oozed out there. Um, it should sand off pretty easily. Only downside is that sanding that or cutting it down will affect the uh, the finish of the rest of the part. Um, there's not as much sort of squash as I was expecting though, so that, uh, that turned out pretty well. And it feels pretty strong. It's, it's not even not even bending there at the joint. Well that took a lot of force, but 
Anyhow, so that one failed, um, but I was really pushing it. Uh, let's see what this one looks like. Now, this is the one that was just acetone, and it's definitely a cleaner join. There's not as much sort of squashing out of the joint there, so a little bit better result visually. Uh, let's see how much it takes to break that one. All right. Oh, yeah. That failed as well, but again, probably about the same amount of force as it took to do this one. So I think this may be the way to go if you've got a clean break and you can get the two pieces to go back together without requiring any fill-in. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that took a good bit of force to break it. Uh, I know it looks like it failed pretty um, spectacularly. So this joint, again, is one where it's just snapped off and it should fit right back together with the other part. So I uh, imagine I'm not gonna need any fill-in, so I'll probably just do um, a little bit of acetone on both sides, let it, s let it do its work kind of as a solvent, and then press the pieces together and use the, the tape as a clamp. So as a, uh, as a comparison, this, is, this was super glue, and again, it's a nice clean join. There's not any sort of extra overlap. There's just a little bit of the, uh, the super glue itself there, uh, and that can be sort of sanded off or uh, polished off as well. And then I'm gonna try and, oh yeah, that was a lot easier. Yeah, and that didn't quite, it didn't bend or take as much force to break this as it did these other ones. So I think the acetone is the way to go for uh, the GS parts. Your mileage may vary depending on what kind of cracks and breaks you have. There we go, so there's my experimental group and now I'll uh, give this guy a shot. But the first thing I'm gonna do before I glue this on is I'm gonna make a 3D model of it so that if yours has broken off and you want to replace it, you should be able to order one from my Shapeways store. And uh, keep an eye on my website for that. That'll probably be up in the next uh, week or so. So here we have the aforementioned 2GS, and you can see this latch is intact, whereas this one has gone missing. The normal mode of operation for these guys is you uh, push that in and lift up the top case, and it should come off like so. So as you can see, that puts a lot of stress over time on this little uh, joint in the plastic right there and sometimes you can even see where the stress on the plastic has actually turned it white that's what happens when plastic itself gets a little stretched under tension this one seems pretty solid though and here you can see a little bit better view of the failed joint right there as I said before, what I'm going to be doing is putting just a tiny little bit of acetone there on the exposed part of the broken join there, and then matching it up with its mate here. And uh, what I'll do, I'll take this out of the way. I don't want to get acetone on that, but I also don't really need it sitting in the way. What I plan to do is tape the broken piece in place and use that as sort of a, use the tape as sort of a hinge and as a clamp to hold it in place once the actual acetone is on the joint there. 
So, if you've never taken the power supply out of a GS, well, it's a pretty easy process. Apple started to get their mojo together around this time for making cases for uh, their machines very modular and easy to disassemble. So it's just a matter of removing the, the actual plug here and it's even keyed so you can only put it in one direction. And then the latch in the front of the case, pull that latch back. This is another thing that could break, um, but it doesn't get actuated quite as often as the ones in the back of the case. Um, but uh, if you do have a broken one of these, um, I don't think it's quite as critical because you generally don't take the power supply in and out that often and uh, gravity will pretty much hold it in place. So you just pop that, pull it up, and it will come out of the back. It also has tabs along the back that mate with these in the back of the case. That holds it steady from moving the, uh, the machine around a bit. Um, this battery, uh, just for those who are sticklers for batteries and such, um, this battery has been replaced and it's actually on a uh, little removable socket here. So before this goes into storage again, um, the battery can come out um, or it can be replaced with a fresh one if it uh, runs out of juice. If you have a GS and you haven't replaced this battery with a socket or one that can be removed, um, go ahead and pause the video and go do that now because uh, these batteries not only will fail, um, but they'll fail pretty spectacularly and blow out some nasty gunk and uh, generally cause um, corrosion nightmares on the logic board here. So now that you've done that and come back to watch the rest of this video, um, let's get to the repairs. So I'm just using uh, pretty cheap blue painter's tape here. Uh, nothing fancy, but uh, it'll also come right off the case without leaving any residue. And uh, I did test it before with the acetone. This stuff isn't going to dissolve in acetone itself, which could be uh, kind of a giant mess if that were the case. So I'm gonna stick that right on there. Line up broken piece back in its original orientation. And I've got a little hinge that will let us put that back right to where it belongs and then should hold it in place while the acetone sets up. So once again, doesn't take a whole lot. This is literally just a drop or two of acetone and I'm using a, a toothpick to apply it. So tiny little amounts, um, partly because I don't want to spill and uh, end up with little melted bits of GS case. But also because this doesn't really need that much to work. It's hard to see because this is clear liquid, but I am getting just a tiny little bit of each swab here. Might be worth trying with a Q-tip or something like that if you've got a larger area to apply to. I know this isn't a whole lot of acetone, but the stuff is fairly volatile and it stinks. So you should be doing this as I am in a well-ventilated room. I think that should do it. I'll just pop that right onto there. So the tape is holding it in place. Put a little bit of extra pressure on it uh, for a minute or so while it uh, while it sets up initially, 
and then I'll come back in a little while and uh, check on it, see how well it behaves. So after having taken a look at the, uh, the result here, I think what happened was me messing with it after the, uh, messing with it yesterday while it was still curing was probably not the best idea because it seems to have just broken clean off where that join was, um, even though the acetone looks to have done a pretty good job of bonding the plastic together. So I'm going to try it again, uh, and this time I'm going to make sure that I have a nice clean weld here and a nice uh, uh, solid surface for the acetone to work on, and then um, I'm just going to leave it be and not mess with it, uh, not test it until it's totally set up. So I'll check back again in a little bit. All right, I'm back again, uh, having a look at uh, this uh, acetone welded joint. When I came back before, it seemed extra wobbly, so I made sure to, to give it an extra push down into place um, just to make sure that the, uh, the, the parts were bonding pretty well. And normally what I would say is clamp this, but this is such a weird shape that uh, the tape the tape did a pretty good job clamping it, holding it in place. Pressing the parts together like a sandwich would be ideal, but uh, since you're doing thing and things end on, it's it's difficult in this particular situation, and also the shape makes it hard. But um, pressing on it with the uh, the usual amount of pressure needed to uh, actuate the hinge, and uh, it seems to be uh, well well. I say that, and then it just broke. So. Oh well, so I'm going to call that a failure. It seemed to be okay, but ended up failing. All right, let's see what we've got this time. Pretty solid again, but the last one did too. I'm going to that back and forth a few times. Seems like it's pretty solid. Alright, so as promising as that idea was, the bond definitely took, but it just doesn't seem like there's enough surface area here for the bond to be strong enough to take that back and forth stress as it is. So my next strategy, such as it is, is going to involve using a scrap piece of plastic here. So I'll be using this scrap piece of plastic here as a splint so that this can bond horizontally while this bonds vertically and the scrap splint piece should increase the strength of the hinge and the bond together enough to make it so that so that this piece doesn't crack and fall off after just a few rotations. So that's the next attempt. Um, I'll see what I come up with. If that one fails, um, I have designed the replacement part and we'll see if I need to go that way. So here we go. Attempt number uh, N plus one. I finally found my small clamp here uh, to hold the bits together while they set up. Hoping that will make a much stronger bond between the pieces. In addition, I've added a shim to the outside here to give this something to uh, to attach to. And then to clamp it all together, I've added another shim right here. Uh, and that's not actually glued, it's just holding the clamp in the right position so that it holds this and the shim that's behind it in place. So, with all of that, I'm hoping that this repair will work better than the previous, uh, however many attempts I did. Alright, so, at long last, here is the final result. Here's the, uh, the part and the shim there holding it in place. And this is some, some of the extra acetone and uh, ABS that sort of oozed out the top and then some more outside. 
The result is really quite sturdy, both laterally and uh, in proper orientation. Um, may have to come in with the Exacto or uh, maybe a Dremel or something, maybe just some sandpaper, kind of smooth that down so it doesn't look quite as lumpy and nasty. But uh, it should be, feels really sturdy. I mean, I can move the whole case with it. Um, and it bends, it bends in a fairly promising way, but not so much that it breaks the join. Um, since most of the actual um, joint is here, over top of where the part would normally bend, it's taking the stress with this shim piece here. And again, around the front, I'll have to take some of this uh, extra um, sort of adhesive, I guess, and uh, sand or scrape that out and make it look a little bit more uh, like new. Um, hoping that once the cover is on and uh, I've got this cleaned out, it will look from the outside anyway like uh, nothing ever happened there. And you won't notice until you come to the inside. And uh, there we go. Well, f And so after all of that, I'm left with this broken piece, and all of its nasty brokenness. Rather disappointed, but I do have my backup solution, which is a 3D printed replacement part. Um, it should work without glue. Uh, I've added a little latch here, and uh, this should fit underneath the uh, broken off piece um, that's left over inside the case. I've taken an X-Acto and uh, kind of shaved this part smooth so that it's even with the back of the case here. Maybe just a little bit of sandpaper to kind of make that nice and even uh, so that this will sit flush with this ridge that runs around the edge of the GS. And then this notch here is where this piece will go. And it should be flexible enough. Uh, of course, I say that about plastic, and then of course it breaks the next time I try and flex it. But it should be flexible enough to bend without breaking. I say that as I bend it without it breaking. Um, this is the this is from Shapeways. This is the white, strong, and flexible material. Uh, this file is also on uh, Thingiverse. So if you have a 3D printer, you're going to need to print it um, with some supports uh, for this part but the rest of it should print just fine without any extra support. I kind of changed the, uh, the overhang here. The only thing that's going to need support is this, uh, this little latch bit. Um, uh, I'd print it solid because it's pretty thin in places rather than trying to do a, an infill. Just go ahead and do 100%. Um, so let's test fit it and see how it works in this GS. Okay. That seems to be all right. Looks like the latch could be a little bit longer. Yeah, this part here could be just a little bit deeper. But you see how it works, or how it will work, once this part is the right dimension. And uh, there we go. So that should stay in place. Again, once this is in the right spot, this little latch here will hold on to that notch there and that should provide it enough support to be able to go back and forth or at least hold the top of the case uh, the gs in place and now after some strategic adjustments this fits a little bit better um, i feel like it may actually need a spot of glue right here for a really solid purchase but uh, with a couple of small tweaks to the design this will fit more securely and uh, will be a good replacement for folks with broken latches um, it is kind of a stark white right now but the uh, solution to that is a really quick paint job and uh, yeah then it'll be done uh, a little sanding a little uh, paint 
And aside from a couple of details uh, sticking out here at the edge of the case, uh, it should look pretty much like original equipment um, after a little bit of paint and sanding. And I'm back again with the painted part. Here we go. Uh, see it's a little bit more platinum in color than it was before. I'll just snap that in place. And uh, again, slightly redesigned part will probably stay in place a little bit better, but this will give you an idea of the, uh, the end result. So let's put the cover back on and see what it looks like. And that's about how it's going to look. Again, there's still some tweaking required, but should hold the uh, hold the cover in place. And obviously, if it needs a little bit more stability, you can always add a little glue, or maybe even just a piece of uh, double-sided tape or something there to. Hold that. Obviously, if you're less concerned about this part being removable, it can always be uh, glued in place instead of just relying on this latch. So there's the replacement part, and here's an original part. I think that turned out pretty good. Well, all things considered.